I work at Stormpath. I'm also here with Randall in the back who gave a talk, I think, at the last one, so on security. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have a really cool user management product. You guys should check us out. It's really good for building products very quickly. Um, that's me. And this talk is here. I'll leave this up for a sec in case anybody wants to like grab this. There's a PDF in that repo that is this talk. Um, so Express. Express is pretty cool because, you know, as Node is, you can do full stack in the same language. Like I, I've been doing full stack development since before it's called that. It just like back then, it was I thought it was called like I'll do everything and not say no, but now it's cool that I can do everything and still not say no, but do it in the same language. So that's pretty cool. Um, so what is Express Middleware? Well, if you've used Express for more than like five minutes and got like any kind of Hello app running, you've used the middleware because the way Express works is it's meant to be this really lightweight framework for saying hey. There's a request coming into the server. I need to send something out, be that an HTML page, a JSON response, whatever. So when you're like bootstrapping your Express app, following the tutorials out there, and it's like showing you to use the body parser and then use like Express.static and things like that, those are all following this notion of middleware, which is really just like a chain of functions that are going to take in an object that represents the request and the response. In other frameworks, most of the Java frameworks, they're called filters, because that's kind of like the design pattern. It's the idea that you have this data structure, which is the incoming request, and you're going to pass it through some filters and do some things to it, transform it, basically. So at its basic level, I mean, this is middleware. It's just a function that has this signature of request, response, and next. And that's it. Like any, anytime you're doing anything in Express, it's just firing off a series of these things, just calling them and doing whatever transformation is going to happen. In this particular example, it's just a really simple logger. It's just going to print some information about this request to the console and then keep moving on by calling it next. This is also middleware. This is um, a third party module called serve favicon. And all it does is just look at the incoming request and be like, is somebody asking for that fav icon thing? If so, I'm going to send that. Otherwise, I'm just going to go next and not do anything. And so that's like, in my opinion, and this is sort of like the mantra of Express middleware, if you're writing them on your own, is that it should just be like a function that does something like awesome and well documentable. So somebody can really easily just like take this piece and be like, yeah, I need to serve a fav icon in my application, so I'm just going to mix this piece in. I've had to get really intimate with the expectations of people around middleware, because at Stormpath, I'm writing a lot of Express middleware, as is Randall, for our, um, for our integrations. And it's, it's this interesting dance of trying to make them awesome, but also configurable and small enough at the same time. It's, it's a fun and laborious process. So in this talk, I want to walk through building one and wiring it up just to kind of get a feel for how it integrates with like your main Express application. Like I was saying, if you've used Express for more than like just a few minutes, you, you kind of already get this, but sometimes it helps to walk through it. So in our application, we want to do like three simple things. We're just going to say hello, goodbye, and we're going to log the requests. And as we go through this, we're going to see some of the nuances about how you can go about doing this. So in this Express application here, it's basically not doing anything, right? Like this is sort of like your basic Express getting started. I'm going to have an app. I'm going to have a server. We're going to bring in now that logger function that I showed in the earlier screen, taking that signature of request, response, and next. It's just going to log something to the console and then keep going on. So we've got that defined. It's not actually hooked up yet, though. We're not using it. You have to explicitly declare to Express, hey, there's this middleware, and I want to use it. So that's what this statement is here, app.useLogger. Now, when you're first getting started with Express, you'll see a lot of these app.things. things, and they can be like totally confusing, like app.get, app.all, app.use. Throw in the idea of routers. We'll get there in a minute. What app.use means is like I want every single request coming into this server to be run through this function. So at this point in this super simple server, all we're going to be doing is just logging a line to the console every time somebody makes a request. That's all it's going to do. And this is just a demo of what that's going to look like. 
So using curl, we're going to just like make a request of our server. And then in the server's log, we're going to see that. Now, there's something curious here. Check this out. See how it's saying you can't get slash? That's because we haven't actually done anything other than write to that log line, right? So yeah, we're doing something. But then we're just going on. So Express basically says, like, yeah, there's like nothing else for me to do. So as part of it being like a nice, friendly HTTP framework that does like reasonable default things, it basically just says 404, not found. Like, and, and then it's basically like done. So let's do some more, right? Let's, like, let's say hello to the people who are coming into us. So we're going to add another middleware that basically just says hello. It's going to write to the response this time. So in the logger, we're dealing with the incoming request. It has all this information about what somebody's asking of the server. But then on the response side, it's basically a thing we're going to write to, a thing we're going to send information down. This is how we talk back to people. So we're just going to do something really simple. We're going to write hello and then tell Express, OK, I'm done saying hello. You go on and do something else. So now we're actually going to define a URL on our server, or a route, or an endpoint. All these terms are used interchangeably. This is saying, like, I want people to make HTTP GET requests of my server. So like, when your browser, when you type into your browser, you know, whatever.com slash hello, that's a GET request. So we're now telling our server, like, all right, we're going to respond to hello, and we're going to use the hello middleware. <coughs> so what happens in this situation? Well, we get the hello. We also get the log line there, because we're still using our app.use. So again, this notion of a layer of filters, right? Everything's going to go through the logger first. But then, because you also have this declaration coming after, it's going to hit this guy too. So in this situation, we get, we get both things happening. This is the, this is the idea of like the composability of middleware and express. You want to be able to kind of mix and match layer as you see fit for your purposes. Um, so now we've got hello happening and our log line happening. But something curious is happening. We're not, the curl command isn't exiting. It's just sitting there waiting for something to happen. So this is like, this was like my first like five minutes of like fury with express was being like, <laughs> why is it not ending the response? Like what, like what's going on here? Well, it turns out you have to end the response, <laughs> right? So previously, if we go back, we were just saying next, which is telling Express, I don't know, maybe somebody else is going to do something. Like, like, we'll see, right? It's sort, of like this, it's sort of like this fallback position where you're like, yeah, I don't know. Somebody else might do something here. So I'm just going to call next and like, not worry about it. But because this is our own application and we have to make some decisions about what's going to happen, well, we need to end the response. So now we're going to actually define a new one here called buy. So we're going to let hello stay the same way. We're going to let it call next and let somebody else figure out what, ha what happens next. Well, in this case, we have a buy function. And we're going to decide, OK, it makes sense to say buy after hello. So now in this chain, the sensible things are going to happen. You know, We're going we're gonna to log our line. We're going to write hello. Then we'll write by, then we'll call end. And now, like, everybody's happy. You get hello and by, you get a log line. All right. So that's like the super like basic overview with lots of like additional information about how these middlewares work. But there may be a lot of different ways you want to use middleware and express. And this is like the awesome thing about it. It's just it's just wiring up functions. It's like Lego blocks, you know, like you can do so many different things. So let's say we don't want to log every single request. We only want to do it on certain endpoints, certain routes. <coughs> so we're going to use our hello and bye on two separate routes, meaning we're going to get the same expected behavior out of that at the end. It's going to write hello and bye and end the response. But on this one, we want to know if anybody's asking for hello. We don't really care about this one for whatever reason. But on this one, we want to know. So, out of that, you'll get the expected behavior. You know, you can make a request for hello and the waza route, but you only get the one log line. So it's this idea of like mix and match that really makes Express shine. Question? Um, on the hello route, if you didn't put next, uh, would the app just hang, the request wouldn't finish? 
Yeah, it would just sit there. But, but on, the, on the buy, we don't need, we don't need next pass into the function on function. Yeah, you're totally right. You could, um, wait back here, you could omit this. And if you're using a JavaScript linter, which you all should be, it will tell you to get rid of that. So, linters, they'll, they'll drive you crazy for a few days, and then you'll be like, oh my god, I write software, I write JavaScript without bugs the first time, and you're like, yeah. All right, so we went through that guy. All right. How many of you guys have used the router stuff in Express? It's like new and four, I think it was. It's, um, it's pretty cool. It's sort of like a way of nesting servers inside of servers, but it can mess with your head a little bit the first time you use it, because it does some things that you wouldn't expect, one of which I'll call it in particular. So coming back to these same middleware functions we have, we're going to use this new router thing in Express. So like we did before, we're creating like your basic Express app here. But now we're also going to create a router. I'm calling it an API router. So the idea is that I'm writing a web server that you know may serve kind of like a public marketing site, but then also might serve some kind of an API behind like a slash API slash you know whatever kind of route scheme. So I'm saying, all right, on the API router, I want to use this logger. I want to know all the things that everybody's asking for. But for the rest of my site, if somebody tries to hit like my .com root domain, I'm just going to say hello by, like whatever. No, there's, there's nothing to be found here. You've you got to know there's an API here, right? So that's what I'm going to do everywhere else. But then down here, this is the interesting part. You can pass routers to app.use calls. So what this means is that anytime a request comes in that starts with this API route, I want this router to handle that. And just, you can really think of the, the API router as a whole separate Express application. And the cool thing behind this is that it kind of forces you to, if you start programming your stuff this way and being friendly to, to working with routers, it just makes your stuff much more modular. And it sort of starts to decouple the inner workings of like your service and your API from the routes, the name that you give things. So it's, it's kind of like, it kind of helps you like reconceptualize like what your stuff is doing. So even if you just like try it one day on the weekend for fun, like I suggest it, cause then you might have like a like aha moment. All right, now, like I said, there's some, there, it can mess with your head a little bit. So let's take, in this situation, just if you've been looking at it for a minute, you might have an idea of what's gonna happen here. When I look at this, I'm thinking, all right, Every route is going to get logged, and I want to say hello and bye on every route, but then also have the API router. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, see, I'm, I'm even reading this wrong. This is where it gets messy. When I read this from top to bottom, I'm like, all right, I want the API router to log everything. Everyone else says hello and bye. That's what I expect to have happen. But when you actually run this code, something funny is going to happen. You're going to get the hello and bye on both the root and the API subrouter, but nothing's getting logged. Even though we said back here, yo, API router, I want you to use that. Well, <laughs> the really short and simple and annoying answer is that the order matters. So what's happened here is I've swapped these from the last screen. Because let me go back to the other one just to explain this a little bit here. What's actually happening is because I'm calling this one first. Express is going to hit this first and invoke that whole chain first. And because on the buy route, I'm ending the response and not calling next, it's never even going to get down to the next one that's registered by this guy. So you have to be really aware of this. Otherwise, you'll drive yourself crazy, and you'll have to start using a debugger, and nobody likes to do that. So just <laughs> you, you have to just like really kind of just like sit and almost like meditate on it for a minute and kind of imagine what's going on. And when you start doing asynchronous stuff inside of these things, then calling next, that's when it gets really crazy. So it's just good to know that the ordering matters up front. Because um, like my, my first week writing Express apps was just like this dance of reorganizing things and hoping it would like, reordering things and hoping it would work out. But then eventually I had to go like look at the, quote, the code of the modules I was using and be like, all right, what are these guys doing? Who's not calling next? Who's calling response to end when they shouldn't be? Like, if you're really getting frustrated using third-party code, 
with your Express app and it just doesn't seem like it's doing what it should. That's sort of my piece of advice is like go in their source code <laughs> and just search for anywhere where they're calling next or ending a response. Because then you'll at least get like a basic idea of the flow control that's going on in their library to figure out where it may be going wrong. So um, after we reorder these, everybody's happy, hello, bye. And we get a single log line. Because if you remember, we're only using the logger on the API router, not the other guys. Now there's one more thing here that's weird. Does anybody see what it is? I'm just curious. All right. It's this guy right here. So you're requesting API says hello, but this is what's getting logged. So when you're using these express subrouters, it basically thinks that like it owns the universe. So even though you've told the, the higher parent express app to use, every, to use the API prefix for this subrouter, that subreader has no knowledge of that. It's just like, yo, somebody's passing me a request for slash hello. So you have to be mindful of that as well. Um, cool. So I'm basically getting to the end here. Um, as I was saying, like, there's so much third-party middleware out there. You know, some of it's good, some of it's not as good. And I've given you a few ideas of how to like help debug it. But I just want to throw a few cool ones out there. And this will end with a shameless self-promo. Um, Morgan is an, an actual request logger, as opposed to this trivial little example we wrote. It's super awesome. You should check it out. Node client sessions from Mozilla. They have done an amazing job of creating a middleware layer for setting and reading cookies. They give you all kinds of amazing options, including encrypting the cookies, so that when they're stored like on, on your users' browsers, they're actually encrypted, which is like super awesome. Helmet. Randall just told me about this today, and you guys should absolutely be using this. It like, I mean, you can read the list here. It does all these things by default that just make your website way more secure. So like right now, just go require this in your Express app, and you have tests, right? So that you know it doesn't blow everything up. All right. No <laughs> um, OK, here's this, the self-promo part. Start by the Express. This will give you an example of showing you how to make like an awesome monolithic like middleware that does everything you need for user management. And then totally orthogonal, Stormpath, SDK, Angular, JS. I wrote this. If you use Angular, it's awesome. You should check it out. All right, let's give a hand for Robert.